it's uh, very far above my expectation. Show the customers what we can do with our product. This machine here is the newest addition to our arsenal of equipment at SIGI. And uh, this is called an air classifier. And uh, its purpose is to fractionate flowers into um, their main component. So what I can do is I can take this uh, flower, put it through the system, and separate uh, a coarse fraction and a fine fraction. The coarse fraction will be the starch, and then the fine fraction will be the protein. The, the flour that goes in here must be very finely milled, usually impact milled or pin milled to get a particle size um, a little bit smaller than your regular white flour would be. Um, the particle size would be between you know, 20, 30 microns all the way up to maybe, maybe 80 or 100 microns. Um, whereas regular uh, flour is a little bit above 100 microns. The separation is, is made based on uh, volume and density of the particles. Starch uh, tends to be larger particles, proteins are smaller particles. The purpose of all this is that there is a, an emerging market of uh, fractions from flowers, and fractions from flowers have unique um, uh, functional characteristics as opposed to a regular flower. Um, so some of, the, uh, some of the things that we can do with uh, fractions for flowers, for instance, the starch fraction uh, can be used in products like pasta, uh, baked products, uh, batters and coatings, extruded snacks, uh, fillings, and salad dressings. Uh, whereas the pea uh, fraction, which is the fine fraction, could be used to increase protein in, in food products or even used in beverages, um, things like granola bars, baby foods, um, pastas. Uh, it's very popular in meat products, uh, veggie burgers, or, or other baked, baked goods. So the way it works, um, basically two principles. Uh, one is uh, centrifugal force, and the other one is friction. And the friction force is supplied by uh, the movement of air. The centrifugal force is supplied by a spinning disc uh, inside this section here. So. I take my flour, um, in this case we have split yellow pea flour, it is fed through by a rotating screw and it's introduced into um, this chamber here, there is a rotating wheel, it's called, a, it's, it's called the classifier wheel inside here and as well as airflow. Um, so the par particles get separated in here, the coarse fraction comes through here. Uh, which would be the starch fraction. The fine fraction keeps on going and is deposited in this container here and uh, this would be the protein fraction. Um, each pulse flour is different. Uh, we can have chickpea flour or uh, lentil flour or bean flour um, and the parameters have to be set differently. So we, have, we may have to have set the air flow differently or the speed of the, the wheel differently to get the desired particle size um, cut point that we wanted. Once the product is finished running through, what I want to do is I want to see how efficient the process was. So ideally I would like to have a really concentrated protein fraction um, and that to me will mean that the process was efficient and the settings were set correctly for that particular flower. So what I will do is I'll take the, um, the, the fine fraction and I'll do a protein analysis on, analysis on it and that will tell me how much protein I have in it. So what I would expect uh, in this process is that I would start off with about 20 to 25 percent protein uh, in the regular flour or the, the, the start flour and then the fraction would be around 60 percent protein. So uh, more than double what I've had before. And at that point this product has unique functional characteristics versus this product. Or, or any other flour for that matter, because of the high protein. So this is the, uh, the protein fraction, um, most likely around 55 to 60 percent protein, and this would be the coarse starch fraction. So far to date at Siggy, we've done uh, work with yellow pea flour, 
and we're learning um, how it reacts when put into the system and we also have done work with lentil flour as well. We'll be doing many many more projects with different pulses and even looking at um, different pre-treatments um, prior to this process to see how efficient the process can be. Um, so this is a lab scale uh, model and these pieces of equipment um, on a commercial scale are uh, very, very, very large. So um, before we do any work on a commercial scale, we need to know how these products behave on a, on a small scale.